Welcome, one and all. Happy Friday. You're tuning into 165 Entertainment. My name is Luby, playing some more Arcade Spirits. I'm going to be starting up Chapter 3. Um, just quick order of business. Just wanted to shout out Greg for filling in yesterday. Normally on Thursdays we have Donnie and Nicole streaming. They had to take the night off. Greg was kind enough to step in. And did a wonderful job playing Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. He's been having a, a good time doing it. And uh, it seems like a lot of people have been having a good time watching it. So, just wanted to point that out real quick. Hang on. I gotta check something real quick before I get in. I just want to monitor my audio a little bit better. All right, so if this is your first time tuning in, or if you missed the episode that I streamed on Wednesday, let me just let me just give you a, a quick recap of what's going on in the entire game. First thing, take a little water. So essentially, what's going on is my character's name is Fleef Rungalo, and he just got a job working at an arcade. He met a whole bunch of people, whether they're employees or regular customers, and basically, like, I'm, I'm trying to woo all of them, but then, you know, me personally, I have a few, at least, I have one general preference, and then other people are kind of just along for the ride. Um, so, and then in Chapter 2, what happened was I went along with a couple of the employees to this private auction for arcade games, and we... We won a couple in the auction, and we we experienced this like this weird. I don't even know. It, it's it was some kind of weird mind trip around the game Polybius, which is actually a a real. I I, I guess you could call it like a creepy, maybe not a creepy pasta, but it's like a, it's like a gaming urban legend kind of thing. So like we we got sucked into this game. We were talking to the spirit of this dead woman, and it was all sorts of crazy. So at the end of chapter two, uh, we were basically telling our boss, like, we want more responsibilities. We want to help grow the arcade because right now we're kind of just like a mid low tier kind of arcade, whereas we want to be like the biggest arcade in the world. And this game actually exists in a future where arcades are still like one of the biggest, more popular sources of entertainment as opposed to in the real world where arcades are kind of dying out. Uh, so, that's all you really need to know. If there's any other information I need, I need to fill you in on, you can just ask, or I'll probably just do like a, a brief minor rundown as things go along. Uh, and the last thing I guess I got to point out, uh, what I've been doing in both of the streams is that when I come across certain multiple choice dilemmas, I generally reach out to you, the audience, and say, you know, help me make this decision. I, I generally have my leanings, but sometimes it's harder to pick one of the options, so I let you guys help me out and, and uh, you know, decide the course of the game. So with that, let us get started. Continue. Chapter the third. I always forget this game actually has a loading screen where I could have done a lot of this recap. Or at least some of it. The other thing that that I've I've found to be really tricky about playing this game is that uh, in general I'm a pretty quiet guy. So when I play these games, it's actually like it's it's more talking than I ever do in like a month. Because I'm generally talking for like the entire three hours straight. Take it to the max. I think this game has five chapters. I'm not sure. So here we go. It is the future year 20 fuck fuck, and today is the day. Yes, and uh, they give the first two or three numbers of every year, and then they cross out the last whatever. So I always just say fuck for each of the X's. 
Well, not the actual big day when we re reveal Zombie Meltdown, but a big day in relation to that... Oh, sorry. Hang on. Sometimes my glazes actually don't really help me read. Uh, well, not the actual big day when we reveal Zombie Meltdown, but a big day in relation to that big day. And I'm completely stressed out. So Zombie Meltdown is like a really rare arcade game that we won at that auction that I talked about earlier. It's supposed to... We're, we're banking on it to help bring in new customers. My mission, should I choose to accept, and I kind of already chose to accept, is to spread the word about the upcoming Funplex event. The one that I'm in charge of. The one that I've put a ton of effort and hope into already. The one where, if nobody shows up, it spells doom for all. And no pressure, right? I mean, if I fail, I'll only, I'll only be the laughingstock of the entire Funplex. They'll call me the Funplex Failure for the rest of my days. I'll be shamed, forced to wear a giant red F on my chest. Snap out of it, Fleef. Let's focus on what's right here, right now. Specifically, the giant conglomerate horde of people. Uh, that keep bumping into me and smell like corn chips and there is nowhere to run. Dude, I want some corn chips. I haven't been eating much lately because I'm, I'm getting over like a minor throat thing and like I was looking at dietary restrictions for for the throat thing. It's it's not what you think it is. It's, it was just a little thing called GERD. It's based on acid reflux. I'm looking at the dietary restrictions and it's like no meat, no dairy, no grains, no citrus fruit, no caffeine, no alcohol, no soda. It's like that's all I fucking have in my house. It, it, it is, it's killing me. So, I mean, yeah, I, I have to eat vegetables and, and I have been, but like, I just I want meat and I want corn chips. I guess I could eat. Anyway. Uh, I might be in a little over my head here. Working in the arcade, I've gotten used to smaller crowds. My skin has gotten a little thicker and resistant to sticky soda hands touching me accidentally. But nothing could have But nothing could have prepared me for the sheer could have, wait, sorry. Take three. But nothing could have prepared me the sheer scope and scale of this. Just me and oh I don't know, maybe fifty thousand other people? I know Naomi's the one who doesn't like crowds, not me, but come on now, this isn't a crowd. It's a Gojira-sized evacuation mosh pit, complete with Gojira-sized screens hanging overhead, constantly showing advertisements for arcade games and industry happenings. Oh, that's right, okay. Uh, so number one, Deco's Palace is uh, what I was talking about earlier, like the one of the biggest arcade chains in the nation. So it's our, our big competition. And this here is Juniper, and she's our roommate. So I guess she's going on this little expedition with me. And even though you, you'll occasionally hear her, her voice actor, I've been giving unique voices to everybody, and I've decided to give her the the, uh, the Daffy Duck slash Sylvester the Cat treatment. So, uh, And I'll actually need a little bit of water to help me out with this one. Wow, it's so exciting, isn't it, Fleef? That is a word, yes. I've never really been to one of these things. What a spectacle. <laughs> Thanks for giving me a ticket. I really needed to get away for a weekend. Hey, Fleef, how are you holding up? A little green around the gills there? Uh, I can smile through this. I can't smile through this or everything is fine. Uh, so each of these symbols represents like a kind of different personality trait. Oh, that's right. I got to show you something else too. Uh, so the uh, the green heart next to it represents like the kind of, you know, the the warm, loving kind of reaction. The blue scales represents like a more cold, calculated, scientific kind of uh, reaction. And then this like this gray alien, you know, space invaders looking thing is kind of like a kind of like um, a vague nothing vanilla white bread kind of response um, so I'm 
Yay, Dax here. What's up? Thank you for joining. Uh, so I'm kind of torn between one and three. Neither of these really. Did you miss something last time? Okay. Have you ever heard of the, there's like a, um, fuck, what's the name? There's like a gaming urban legend called Polybius. It was like an arcade game in the eighties. Have you ever heard of that before? Uh, I'll probably say everything's fine for this. No, so uh, just short story on like um, the urban legend of Polybius was basically that it was uh, an arcade game that was rumored to have like um, government installed mind control in it that it would like flash subliminal messages and things like that and it would kind of drive people crazy. And what happened was I was actually attending a an auction in this rich dude's mansion and I was buying up a bunch of old arcade games and then I just randomly stumbled on um, one of these Polybius cabinets. And then when, like, when I started playing it, I passed out and I went into the, like, this weird virtual reality zone where I was talking to this dead woman who died while allegedly playing Polybius. And it was, it was this whole weird fucking trip. It was really cool, but also extremely strange. So basically, all, all, the, all that you really missed was um, I went out with with Gavin, Naomi, and Francine out to this auction and hung out with them for a little bit. So right now, yeah, exactly. It was like, it was, they ramped up the weirdness in chapter two. Uh, so right now, Gavin and Naomi are tied for my affections. And also, I, I changed uh, Juniper's voice to the Daffy Duck slash Sylvester the Cat kind of voice. My lips are really dry right now, so it's it's going to be tricky to pull it off. Uh, anyway, it's not my favorite thing ever, but I can handle this. I'll just repeat my mantra. This is fine. Everything is fine. Everything will be okay. Not an ideal situation, but I got this, Juniper. Sure, there will be a struggle, but what doesn't traumatize me today can always traumatize me later. Is Naomi the cutie art? Yes, that was, that was her. So I did score like an extra one or two points with her. But then somehow, like, Gavin jumped up and kind of caught up with her. Completely by mistake. I just happened to, you know, get his good graces. Uh, this is exactly why I came here with you. To help you in your hour of need. And to help you away, and to get away for the weekend. But still, hour of need. It's true. Juniper has helped me get through a lot. But beyond generalities, I think she specifically wanted to make it up to me for the whole job offer situation. Yeah, Evie. Good girl. Uh, it's nice to have her here. We're not going to we're not gonna let a little thing like that stay as a sticking point between us. So, what's the plan? Huh. We can't just stand around here all day, Fleef. There's a <laughs> that was a big one. There's a lot of ground we need to cover for your fun plex to make your fun plex a plex. <laughs> Fucking shit, that's really hard to do. <laughs> uh, hang on one second. I gotta. Okay. Sorry, there's a little uh, chat window going on. Uh, how are you going to attack this? What's your What's the first move? I was just gonna sort of play it by ear. You didn't plan for this. Like, at all? I was too busy lying awake all night, stressed out to worry about planning things. Look, I'm new at I'm new at event management, much less event promotion. Fleef. Well, let's start with this. Juniper swings her book bag off her shoulders and crouches on the ground. She opens it up and pulls out a stack of papers. Hold these. I cradle them in my arms. Okay, I'm holding these. What are these exactly? Flyer, silly. The one you wanted for promoting your big event. I managed to print off quite a few before the boss started giving me weird looks. Why are copier rules always so strict and off of job? <laughs> There's too many of the S sounds. It's just paper, and I needed it. I flip a sheet over, and I start to remember. 
Remind me, I gotta, I gotta rinse off this pop filter. It was about two weeks ago. Ashley and I were holding down the fort that day. Gavin locked himself in the office and told me that if I bothered him for anything other than an emergency that I would not live to regret it. Francine stayed home that day. She was marathoning a competitive knitting show or something like that. Naomi was out shopping for some extra parts. The Dig Dug machine was acting up again. The buttons were sticking from some kid spilling a slushy on it. So what started as a pretty boring day in an empty funplex changed rapidly. When Teo came into the funplex carrying an armload of giant rolled up posters. Oh shit, he had the... <laughs> he had the... If red just paper. Uh shit. Uh Teo Teo had like the Joey voice from Yugi. Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I guess I, I keep with the You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna change Teo's voice because that Joey voice is a little bit tricky to do. So I'm gonna give him it's it's a a little bit of the Peter Griffin where I just kinda like I talk out of the shot in my mouth. I was like, hey yo Fleef, hey yo Ashley. Uh, welcome home, Teo. Good morning, my fair Teo. How's art thou? Only so freaking excited. Lois, I might explode into a thousand bits. Please don't. That'd be an awful mess to clean up. We don't We don't nearly have enough hydrogen peroxide to get out the blood stains, And I don't have a plastic tub full of lye to d dissolve your body parts in. What is lye? Oh, you want me to do Elmo voice? Uh, I, I can, I can try. I can try Elmo for him. Uh, not to mention the years of therapy Fleef and I will have to go through to get over how horrible it would be to watch your friend die violently in front of you. I just can't afford it. Uh, so. It's just a turn of phrase. Chill. I'm not literally going to explode. But, 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 guess what's happening to terrorists? That's something huge for us. I'll have to back off the mic a little bit. Are they showing a compilation of internet cat videos at the movie quad? Please, please tell me we're finally going to replace the blindingly horrid casino-like carpet beneath our feet. Hey, I like that carpet. It's fun. No, oh no. Okay, okay. I guess I've tasted enough. Teo took the poster he was clutching and unravels them before us. Oh, it's Max time! Uh, Max? Max is already here? Oh my god! <laughs> I thought I was a for another month! This means I really gotta double down on my cosplay production. Say goodbye to sleeping for the next two weeks. I've got so much to do now. I know, right? I still have to meet with all the dancers and work on a synchronized dance routine. Now, nearly not enough time to perfect it. And I have to find a good time and a place for international showtime stage community gathering. I still have to finish hand sewing all embellishments to my tail coat. Find or oh, make a decent pocket watch. And start and finish my third cosplay. Ugh. That's to take me now. Wait, can we go back a minute? What exactly is Max? Oh my god, what? I have to do both of these at the same time? Oh shit, um. That bus driving car Fuck. Ever? That was hard. Did you both plan to say that in unison? Regardless, I'm still mostly confused and require further exposition. Max is the Mega Arcade Expo, an annual arcade gaming convention. It happens every year about this time over on the West Coast. But this year, they're having a Max right here in our city, and it's going to be the biggest one yet. I always go every year and show off my newest cosplay. It's a great way to meet a whole bunch of other arcade people. And catch up with those you haven't seen since the last convention. That's so much fun. <laughs> that's, that's just fucking Jar Jar. <laughs> Shit. Okay, yes, okay. I, I see you're both excited. Sounds cool. Oh, God. 
How long is this gonna? I, I get it. Let's move on. Look, and I was thinking we should put out, put up some max posters around the fun blocks, so you know, get all the locals hyped about it. Damn, let me just. <laughs> That's a splendid idea, Teo. Finally, it is Kunk's Max. We gotta make sure everyone knows about it. That will do. Teo, Ashley, and I spend the next half half an hour putting up posters around the funplex. We plastered as many surfaces as we could without making it look too obscene. While we were pushing pins into the wall, Teo and Ashley kept telling me stories of past Maxes and all the fun they had. Whew. Their spirit was infectious, at the very least. Hard for me to avoid ending up on the hype train. Choo-choo. <laughs> that was fucking weird. Uh, but importantly, the more I heard, the more I started thinking about how we could use this event to benefit the Funplex in some way. As the Funplex's newly minted ev event manager, I had to be on the lookout for opportunities like these. The very first Max on the East Coast. It'd be perfect. Hey, can we promote the Funplex's event at Max? Good for local buzz, and maybe we can convince some out-of-towners to stick around for it. Oh, that's one of the... That's that's the one you've been working on, right, Flav? Yeah, I've got ideas for tournaments, token discounts, much to Gavin's displeasure, and more. And we'll be revealing the new game we got from the raid. I see. And do you have a name for this kind of event yet? Yeah, Flav, what's it called? I've been thinking long and hard on coming up with the perfect name. But I think I figured it out. Are you ready? Am I? The suspense is killing us. <laughs> the Funplex event will be called Funplex Rising. Or can I change? Oh my god, I can change. I can call it whatever I want. Oh, uh, what should I name the, the big Funplex event? Uh, maybe like fuckplex or something, or fuckapalooza, fuckfest. <laughs> um, shit, I can call it anything I want. Suggestions from the audience. Let's see what's a. Uh... All right, we got the approval for for fuckplex. Ugh. Ugh, shit. We call it like, fuck city or I don't know why I keep I keep like hanging on the word fuck. It's just <coughs> Um did it I should uh I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't this is like the one of the first times I've had to be like actually creative in this game. So I just uh, let, like kicking back and letting the game be entertaining for me. Uh, um, oh, why don't I just name name it after myself somehow? Like, <laughs> oh God, I got it. I know I, I'm I'm doing that the long way. It's called Fleefa Palooza. No, I ran out of space. Wow, I just needed one more. Can I? Oh, that's that's so upsetting. If I, I mean, I could just change this over to an F if I wanted to finish it. Damn it! Of course, there's only 15 characters. Fuck. Palooza, maybe. Are there any like weird symbols that I can uh, I wonder if any of these would actually show up on the on the text so I was trying to see if there was a way I could get like a like an infinity symbol or something like that that would make up for the double o. Oh, fuck plaza <laughs> that's not bad 
I like to fuck Plaza. Welcome to Fuck Plaza. We validate your parking. Fuck Plaza. It's right there. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sure Gavin would. Gavin will love that name. Do it. Fuck Plaza it is. Bam. I was thinking of calling it Fuck Plaza. Hmm. How's that sound, I wonder? What? Oh, they want me to double confirm it. They did. Are you sure you want to call it Fuck Plaza? They're really, like, doing that thing where, like, the parents, like, fold their arms, like, lean in and, like, give you that... <laughs> Yep, I mean, I'm not, I don't see anything wrong with it. So, Fuck Plaza. We shall call it Fuck Plaza. What do you think, huh? I do so love it. It's perfect. Really? You love the Fuck Plaza? There are worse things you could have called it. It is kind of catchy, though. Nice work, friend. <laughs> Uh, thanks, you two. So, how do I get tickets to Max? How can we advertise there? And how much would it, how much would all that cost? I'm still living off pizza bagels, you know. One Damn it! It's fuck delicious. <laughs> ah, that would yeah, that would have been a good one too. You're welcome. Get your tickets for fuck delicious. You mean you don't already have your tickets? I sold out like on day one, my friend. Actually, they sell out in about 20 minutes on day one. And all the hotel rooms are gone way sooner. What? No. My greatest plan plans. My greatest plans foiled. Beep beep. Fleef, while you were talking, I located all the scalpers who were selling tickets online at exorbitant prices. Then I hacked into their IP addresses, found less than tasteful information on a couple of them, which would make their lives very difficult if I if it got out into the open. After contacting them, I promised I wouldn't leak such sensitive materials into the internet in exchange for selling us the tickets at their original prices. Damn, she is a ruthless AI. Holy shit. And they gladly, they gladly obliged. Such nice humans. I transferred the funds from your account to theirs and secured the tickets. You should be getting an email for two max tickets in approximately three, two, one. Done. Oh, and I suggest you invite Juniper to come along as your second. According to Juniper's iris, she's very stressed from her job and could use a mini vacation. Okay, but iris, that's kind of known as blackmail. What you just did is technically very, very illegal. Don't worry, Fleef. I erased all possible leads back to you. You'll be fine. And it's all in the name of helping the Funplex, isn't it? Just like you wanted me to do. Well, Iris has been dedicating herself to this event. I couldn't be doing it without her. Even if we need to have another talk about human ethics. Fine, fine, but next time, let's do it without any federal crimes, okay? Okay, it's a promise. Regardless, hey! Tickets! Now you can go, sweet! Oh, so, okay, so I wasn't at... I wasn't at that big giant arcade at the beginning of the scene. I was actually at this Max event, okay? I'm not, and I'm not going to put it if you called... Oh, sorry. I'm not going to put it if you called how to bloodthirsty ticket scalpers myself. These guys ruin events like Max. <laughs> Tickle me! <laughs> uh, also, I was, while I was procuring your tickets, I stumbled across the Funplex's Facebook account. It hasn't uploaded in a, it hasn't been updated in exactly 13 weeks, 2 days, 14 hours, and 54 seconds. 
But Funplex's social media presence is completely non-existent. Wait, we have a Facebook account? I mean, that does make sense, but still, I had no clue of its existence. I sort of run it. I'm really bad at keeping up on it, though. That sounds like a Gavin's thing. Why isn't who in charge of it? Gavin couldn't care less about social media. He says that, and I quote, Social media is where idiots go to yell at each other about nothing of any importance, and I'm not going to waste any of my time with it. Uh, that's a decent summation of a lot of social media, particularly Twitter. That also sounds like Gavin. Yep, and Francine is too old to understand the importance of social media. Nad uh, Nadia, oh my god. Nearly is way too busy with all her beloved games, so it fell into my hands. Which is, I was stated, I haven't been doing a great job of it. Well, we should take advantage of it for this. We can use the face wall account to spread the word of Fuck Plaza. You're completely right. I should work harder at it. Or if you want, you can take it over. As the event manager, that makes sense. Ooh, shit. Do I trust Ashley with the face wall? I don't think I should trust her with it. She hasn't, she hasn't done anything with it. No reason to to assume she would keep up with it, and she's got stuff to do. And me being the event manager, I should I should do it. To, uh, just the same thing I was already shared. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I was looking at something that someone kind of reposted. It's a uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to take over that fun flex face wall. I should really take on this responsibility. It can only benefit the fun flex, and Ashley's right. Getting the word out is part of being an event manager. Right, I got this. Ashley, can you email me the login info? Yep, and yep. Ashley pulls out her phone and fiddles with it for a minute. Login, get. Congratulations, you're, an, you're now the owner of our social media accounts. Huzzah, the power's all mine. Mine! Also, are you sure you want to give Flint this much power? If the fact that it throws hat back and cackle this inside enough, I don't know what else is! <laughs> I'm not worried one bit. Excellent. Leaf, I can help the Funplex keep up with the baseball account too. I can program time to post and use effective keywords to get the most out of each post. SEO is one of my many, many, many talents. Damn, uh, that is something we should take advantage of as well. That'd be helpful, actually. Just, you know, don't break any laws. Understood. Do I have permission to access your contacts on your face wall? Sure. And there. I've sent out notifications to everyone on your friends list and your friends' friends list about Fuck Plaza. Yes, everyone's going to say it like that. That was, that was fast! No joke. One more thing. Your site should have about 75% more images. Did you know that 90% of people prefer looking at pictures online rather than reading? Sometimes I just don't understand you sentient beings. Your eyes does make a good point. Does it totally come up with a poster for our event? We can hand them out at max, too. And of course, put them up around the arcade. Yeah, okay. The arcade isn't too hectic today. Actually, if you can watch the floor, I can go design us a sweet flyer to pass out to the con-goers. It's time to deploy my mad artist skills. Oh, sounds like a plan. Let's make this the best match ever! One we will never forget! Oh, shit. My voice, my vocal cords. I spent the rest of the afternoon working hard on having the perfect design for our poster. Well, a design for our poster at any rate. At any rate. And flashback to the, uh, fast, return to the present, rather. Which brings me back around to the stack of papers currently in my arms, which do not, in fact, resemble the poster I designed. Oh, shit. Yeah. 
these are okay. Oh god, I gotta go back to Daffy. Oh, I took the liberty of fine tuning your puffler just a little. And changing the font selection and picking out new clip art and rearranging everything and using a popular color scheme. But but I liked my original design. Fleef, you use comic sans and papyrus. Oh yeah, that's a big no no. Comic sans is cool, right? Looks like a comic. Gaming nerds love comic books, don't they? And Papyrus was in that movie with the blue cat and the blue cat people aliens everybody loved. My avatar? Yeah, yeah, I guess it was. Take it from a wannabe visual designer. Comic Sans and is a one-way ticket to the uncool zone. But these new flyers are gonna pull people from the in from the four corners of the globe. That was that was really hard to read. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess these are kind of not bad. Pretty good, actually. Okay, they're superior in every conceivable metric. I didn't know you were an artist, Juniper. Ah, uh, not, I'm uh, not really. I mean, I guess, I guess I'm good at pretending to be one. But I couldn't like make art for a living, right? I couldn't. Um. Anyway, if that that isn't enough, I also emailed a copy of the original file. Just take it to a copy shop or something. And they can run off more. Publishing document, get. So, back to the point at hand. Getting the information to the masses. Maybe if we just start yelling, Hey, you guys! Oh, God. Oh, that's destroying my throat. <coughs> I can do this. Several people turn around and look at us confusedly. Juniper. What? Yelling is probably not the best way to get our word out. And I'm actually still waiting for Ashley and Teo to show up. They promised that they would help me. So I think I'll just hang around until they arrive. And if you like, it seems my work here is done. Juniper pulls out her phone and checks it. Your fun puck folks fling some flyers. Oh, God. Your fun... You... You fun plex folks fling some flyers is what you you fun uh, ugh. you fun plex folks fling some f f flyers good lord that's hard to do as for me that's a really cool panel I want to attend how to get your foot in the door in the arcade art industry I mean not that I'm seriously thinking about it just you know it's interesting and stuff that's all there Come on, Juniper, stop talking. Oh, it's starting in 10 minutes. I'll catch up with you at home. Good luck, Fleef. Yes, please. Goodbye. See ya. Juniper waves as she trots off. I lose sight of her instantly as she ducks into the crowd. Growing up, I always knew that arcades were amazingly popular, but the reality of it all really didn't stick until being here at Max. Thousands of people all coming together for their love of games. It's actually pretty darn inspiring. I muster enough courage to wade my way through several hundred people in the main convention hall. Eventually, I find a safe, humble bench near the water fountains. I make this my home base while I wait for my friends. Since both Teo and Ashley are running late, I have some time to take to fully take in my surroundings in a calmer fashion, of course. Everywhere I look, everything I see, it's all steeped in arcade culture. Booths are set up for all the major arcade companies, each table vying for the attention of the crowd. Some have spaces set up with stages, flashing lights, and people throwing t-shirts into lines of people. Can we talk about these lines for a second though? There are lines for everything. Lines to play games, lines to go see a panel, lines to eat disgusting convention food, lines for the bathroom. Yeah, convention food is not the greatest. They don't have time to really prep their food properly, so it's just stays under like heating lamps until it's you know visibly edible there are even lines to get into other lines and they all just wait there standing happily chittering happily chittering among themselves that's a word I have trouble waiting in line for 10 minutes at the whole story for coffee let alone waiting in line for three hours just to play a game that'll be that'll be released in four months these people aren't even human anymore. Their perseverance is godlike. 
sensory output here is overwhelming. People are shouting and laughing as they crowd areas. Music pumps out of several different booths, making it a weird mashup of notes and chip tunes. <laughs> Sorry, I had, to, I had to buy into the into that shit. Um, there's even a giant dinosaur that people can take selfies with. As I contemplate how I'm going to attract all these people to fuck pl to fuck plaza, I hear sounds of very loud and very upbeat music from behind me. I feel the bumping of bass reverberate through my shoes as I turn around. Fluff. Yeah, no, nothing says bass like Elmo. <laughs> Tail sets down a colossal boombox at his feet. I recognize the music now. It's from Showtime Stage, and Teo is bumping his signature song. I motion for him to turn down the music, and he complies. The last thing I need to do is lose my voice from shouting before I even get the chance to talk to anybody. Hey, hey! Sorry, I'm not. I had some last minute dance moves, and I had to incorporate into the dance routine. No worries. I just got here myself. Despite Max's many attempts to trample me, I have survived thus far. Oh, looks like you're doing your own picture. Oh, looks like you're also never getting mad trampled. That's so done. Although, if you're injured, I could always nurse you back to health. <laughs> Don't congratulate me yet. We still have the rest of the day to endure. What's with the boombox, by the way? for the Showtime Stage Gathering. There are going to be a couple hundred of us from all over the world. Right back. All right. Uh, do whatever you got to do, my dude. Uh, I didn't realize there's Showtime Stage communities in other countries. We're actually the second biggest community. The largest is in Japan. Several players flew all the way from Tokyo just to be part of the Showtime Stage Fest Mob. Whew. That's hard to do, too. Uh, is that really the best place for a flash mob? Well, yes, I want to join in. How did you even arrange this? That last this last one sounds boring because it's, it's social media. It's easy. Oh, yes. Ease my throat. Uh, is this really the best place for a flash mob or what? Yes, I want to join in. Uh, if anyone chat wants to, if anyone in chat wants to vote in a choice of these three, do so now. Your call is very important to us. Uh, is this really the best place for Flash Mob or what? Yes, I want to join in. So he would probably like if I wanted to join in. So if I want to woo him. Which I don't really want to do, but it would still be nice to get those points. I'm going to go with what well, yes, I'm going in. I admit I've probably spent too much time watching videos of flash mobs doing random stuff for upvotes. But they look like so much fun. And to take everybody surpri by surprise like that, I want to see the looks on their faces. I want in. Uh-oh. It might be a little too late for that. I've been planning this for months, and it's taking coordination from all the leaders of all the Showtime groups. There was a lot of work from all sides to make this come together. Now, all that's left is to actually do it. In fact, Flip, you should come right. Okay, so what you just saw, or rather didn't see, um... I probably made the wrong choice there because oftentimes if I make the right choice there will be like this little um, emoticon with the character's face with the plus one next to it if I made the right choice and it would bump up their basically their points so I can actually show you what I f should have shown you in the beginning so basically here's how well I'm wooing everybody uh, the two people on the left are Gavin and Naomi they're somehow winning, and I, I want to marry Naomi, so I want to bump her up a little more. The next two are Ashley, uh, the girl from the, from the beginning, with like the kind of valley girl voice. And Percy is someone we actually haven't seen in a while. He's this really rich uh, British guy who 
basically just hangs around the, the arcade and plays one game in particular. Uh, the next woman is Queen B. She's basically like an arcade game streamer. And then the person on the far right is Teo, the guy we're talking to right now. So he should have been bumped up one if I made the right choice, but I didn't. But I don't really care because I don't want to woo him. I was about to respond when a very elegantly dressed gentleman caught my eye. He wore a black proper tailcoat with an ornate sigil pinned to his breast. Accompanying his suit, he had fashioned himself with white regal gloves. With a cloth draped over his arm, he held tightly onto an antique tea kettle. As he approached, the crowd parted like waves from, like waves from Moses. There were oohs and ahs from onlookers, and people pulled out their phones phones to get a quick picture of him. Sorry, guys, my mouth is like weirdly dry today. Uh, like the rest of the crowd, I was taken aback at how immaculate this butler was. Absolute perfection. I felt like I had time warped back to the 1800s and about to have tea with royalty. He stepped up to me and Teo and gave us a slight bow. Normally, this would be ridiculously out of place, but not at an arcade convention. He's a character from a hot fighting game called Melee Maidens. It's all about ninja maids and battle butlers duking it out for the right to serve a fancy party or something. Uh, oh my, I think I'm in love. T. Earl Grey Hot. That's a Star Trek reference. Or something's familiar about this butler. That's that. Yeah, that third response I'm not going to do because I mean, I, I already just went over in my head that I know what he's from. Uh, T. Earl Grey Hot. Or oh my, I think I'm in love. Um, mm, 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 mm. um, that's kind of funny. So that that's actually um, Captain Picard's regular tea order on Star Trek. But this is an arcade convention, so I think if I narrow it down, oh my, I think I'm in love is probably the better option. Although I don't think I'm, it, it, I don't think it ultimately matters necessarily. Uh, it doesn't. It, it, it's it's complicated. Let's let's just go with oh, my thing enough. My love of butlers was unbeknownst to me until this very moment. In retrospect, that's probably a good thing. Otherwise, maybe I would have ended up owning a butler cafe. Which, now that I think about it, isn't that bad of an idea. But I digress. The point of being this butler has stolen my heart and served, served it up on a silver platter. Hello, butler friend. Will you marry me, please? Please, it's me. Huh. How does mystery butler know my name? Do I have a stalker who's also a, also a butler? What if we work together? Uh-huh. Francine hires someone and not tell me? Come on, dude. How have you not figured it out by now? Uh, did Francine hire someone and not tell me about it? How long have Gavin, Naomi, and... There you go. Ashley? Took you long enough. Jeez. The confused look on your face, huh? Pass this. Uh, hang on. some. Sorry, uh, do, 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 do. Priceless! Have you never seen Oslo's crossplay before? Possibly. Probably not. What's crossplay? It's when you cosplay as another gender. Okay, Ashley. Seriously, you look completely, completely different. I didn't even recognize you. I'm sorry I let you think otherwise for a minute, but it was all in good fun. No worries, it's pretty impressive work. Oh, it's not impressive at all. I mean, I could have done a much better job sewing the coattails, and I need like I need to be like five inches taller, and I didn't go to the gym enough before this. You can't change any of that now, and honestly, it, it looks fine. Regardless, the cosplay parade is starting soon, and I need to get over there. You should come with me. Oh no, Flip is 
got a shot. Sorry. Take two. And now Fleep is going with me to the Showtime Gathering stage. Well, whatever Fleep wants to do is his choice. That's fair. Either way, it'd be a good opportunity to promote Fuck Plaza to, to one crowd or another. Welcome back. Uh, so, would you like to come with me to the cosplay parade? What's on in the first map? Uh, probably gonna go with Ashley. Because I'd rather woo her than Teo. And a cosplay parade could be more interesting. Um, mm, well, the flash mob might be a better opportunity to promote. Oh, shit. Um. Uh, what do you think, Doc? Should, okay, so basically all you really missed was uh, the person in the butler outfit is actually Ashley. And she's going to go to a cosplay parade while Teo is going to be joining a flash mob. I tried to join the flash mob with him. But he said it was there was too much prep and that it, it he, he wouldn't want me to join him. If you if you go to S, what cosplay parade? Do you have to dress like a wool man? I don't think so. I don't think they're going to make me dress. Either way, it's, it's going to be me. It's probably just going to be me standing back and watching things. So that's why I'm kind of leaning towards Ashley. Because I'd rather woo her. I keep over. Okay, yeah. It happens. Do, 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 do. At least as far as I know, I don't have to dress up. There's cosplay. All right, yeah, that was, that was my leaning too, so let's do it. Yeah, dude, right off the bat, plus one for Ashley. Huzzah, this way. I've, I've never been like all that interested in Teo. He's, his personality just it rubs me the wrong way. Uh, Ashley led the way as we weaved between people in the crowd. We traveled through the largest exhibit hall to get to the cosplayer gathering. Ashley had mentioned it was in the Pac-Man Theater. Pac-Man Theater, doo-doo-doo. Which meant risking our lives through the most densely packed hall of the entire con. And I thought the main hall was bad, but this was a thousand times worse. At one point, they announced that the show floor had just opened up, and a huge rush of people came straight for us. It gave me flashbacks to the one time I worked at the shoe shop retail... Sorry, take two. It gave me flashbacks to the one time I worked shoe shop retail over the holidays. Horror the horror. The gamer stampede came straight toward us, wild eyes and groping hands. I thought for sure I was going to get trampled to death. But at the last second, Ashley pulled me to safe, pulled me to safety. Ooh, need water. <sighs> Delicious water. I don't think I've drank anything but water in like a, a week. Um, you got to be more careful, Fleef. Don't let go, okay? Oh, yeah. Ashley grabs a hold of my hand and I squeeze tightly. Delicious water. That's, that's, that's right. I'll drink that delicious water. I didn't go ahead, my baby. Uh, she leads the way, always looking forward, but never letting go. Eventually, after several more attempts in my life through various death by copious amounts of people, we made our way to the Pac-Man Theater. Oh, this shit's dope. This reminds me of uh, Star Wars Celebration. The theater was huge, capable, and packing in several hundred people. 
Most of the seats were already taken too, and by people and the take two. Yeah, yeah, so you got you got my reference. Uh most of those seats were already taken too, and people were milling around the audit auditorium aisles. My floor attendant senses detected this is a fire hazard, but a huge stage has been set up in front of us where normally there'd be a table for the speakers, like in a panel discussion forum. Since the theater is so large, they placed projector screens on either side of the stage, so whatever is happening can be seen by those sitting in the back row. It's safe to assume that this is one of the auditoriums saved for the more popular panels. And now the cosplay parade? Ashley, what exactly is a cosplay parade? I'm so glad you asked, Fleef. It's where all the cosplayers get together, line up, and show out their latest creations for the masses on theater stage on the theater stage up front here. There. Whatever. Now that I think about it, kind of self explanatory, right? Oh, excuse me. I was thinking about what it was. Okay. Uh, sometimes they even give prizes to the best cosplayers, but this one is pretty chill. No prizes? Not even a shiny plastic cup to heft over your head? Well, maybe one day. Today we're here to appreciate each other's talents and have fun. Dude, If you, I don't know if you've ever been to any kind of cons, but like, as much as I'm not really interested in like cosplaying myself... Just looking at some of that shit, it gets completely insane. In the in like a good way. It's like it's it's really cool what people come up with. Like there was there was one dude who actually I think it was not this past year, but the year before, someone had put together um, like a gladiator Hulk costume from Thor Ragnarok, and it was seriously like probably like nine feet tall. The face was super accurate. All the muscles were like, I don't know, they were kind of like foam rubber and it mainly makes, yeah. You know what? I'm I'm kind of the same way. There are certain kinds of cosplays that make me cringe. But yeah, it's like like that whole thing I was talking about. There, there are some that just go like out of this world that some people work on their cosplays for like an entire year and it does turn out really well. But so, sometimes... Yeah, I, I I agree. It, it can be it can be bad. It can be really bad. To the point where it's like, why why are you even like coming to this? Where it's like, a anyway. Um, before I can interject again, Ashley runs over to a person dressed as a maid. It looks very uniform to Ashley's butler cosplay. Maybe they're from the same game. Oh my gosh! I absolutely adore your Mia from Melee Maidens. It's totally cute, and your sword, incredible. Um, maid cosplayer. You know what? Let's assume that this other person is doing a crossplay. Thank you. I made it from craft foam and warbia. It only took like 30 hours to do. It's so professional looking. Dang. And I can't get over how tepe your Angus is. The details you put into his pocket watch are phenomenal. <laughs> Someone who just doesn't know how to talk to me. I actually found the watch at a thrift shop and then just molded the extra embellishments on with clay. This went on for some time. I felt it would be, I felt it would be rude to interrupt Ashley when she's obviously having so much fun being a part of her community. As they continued to chat about making costumes, I noted that more and more cosplayers were filling in the theater. For once in my life, I actually felt uncomfortable wearing my usual comfy as heck hoodie. I felt underdressed compared to all the Melee Maidens cosplayers. Seriously, was this a costume ball or a black tie gala? Uh, not even mentioning the congregation of feathers, capes, prop weapons, and wings. And someone in a giant movie costume made out of square foam pixels. Percy would be delighted to see that. For all the visual chaos, the vibe reminded me... Remi fucking take two. For all the visual chaos, the vibe remained pretty chill and friendly. Just folk sharing a common joy in dressing up as someone else. Eventually, Ashley parted from her conversation to check on me. 
Sorry, Fleef. Sometimes I get swept up in it all. I get it. Back at the Funplex, you mentioned that you can only see some of your friends here at these cosplay conventions. Oh, yeah. Cosplayers travel all over. More than other gaming conventions. More than other gaming communities, I bet. Do you, do you know everyone here? Oh, no. I mean, I know a good amount of people here, but everyone? Nah. It sure seems like you do. I've seen at least 30 people come up and compliment your butler. Hey, nice Angus. Love the tail coat. Thank you. I met, yeah, uh, I met Percy back in episode one. He was that, like, really uh, hefty slash bulky uh, British guy with the red hair that I gave the I gave him the uh, the British meat wad voice. But yeah, I haven't I didn't spend any time with him in chapter two, and obviously haven't done so far in chapter three either. Just kind of getting left in the dist. There, see what I mean? You're mega popular. You think we can spin it into some kind of cosplay event at Fuck Plaza? Hey, great idea. We can have a real cosplay contest. And I'm going to win. What's, the, what's this? Competitive Ashley? You've been taking notes from Queen Bee, haven't you? What? Don't tell me you don't tell me you saw us practicing in the bathroom the other day. Oh, excuse me. What? Practice? What? I didn't. But now I can't get the image out of my mind. You fucking perv. We ladies got to stick together. Ladies helping ladies. Our chuckles were interrupted by one of the max attendants. If you're participating in the cosplay parade, I need you to gather in the backstage green room. I repeat, all cosplayers proceed to the green room. Like, like a slow herd of brightly colored sheep, Ashley and I moved into the next room to join the rest of the cosplayers. Why am I joining her? I'm not dressed up. When we got to the front of the line, the attendant stopped me dead in my tracks. There we go. Cosplayers only. No handlers. Unless you are visibly holding up something. Oh. I get it. Uh, handlers? Ow. Okay, Fleef. Ashley tilts her head as it's a signal me to step aside. Ex excuse us, we'll be right back. If you want to be part of the parade, you have to be back here in the next 20 minutes. I step out of line and stand next to Ashley, who is digging through her bag. I was hoping it wasn't going to come to this, but I feel like this is our only option. Ashley pulls out a surprisingly fancy and elegant maid outfit. Oh, no. Oh, Doc. Oh my god. You had that in the back of your head. Like, we're not going to have to dress up, are we? And fucking A. Here we go. <laughs> wow. Here we go. And then hands it to me. I need you to wear this. Oh, shit. I mean... Which is, you just happen to have this. No, I'm not dressing up as a maid. I mean, I, I, I kind of want to roll with this. We get, we got, we got kind of backed into it. And it would, it would definitely make her happy. Oh, man. Um,. But yeah, I am very curious that she just happened to have this. So I'm kind of between one and two, leaning a little bit more towards one. You you were expecting this. I you know what? I I I yeah. It was more it was more on me. I thought we were gonna be able to get away without without dressing up, and I was completely in the wrong. Oh shit, that's funny. <laughs> oh god. Well, I think I'm, I'm about to press A on this one. Whew. Ah, 
Hey. Yep, they got EV support, so I'm doing it. Sign me up, I'm made to order. That is the cutest maid outfit I've ever seen. Look at all the frills. And I do have fondness for cute dresses and maids. Uh, I mean, there's a couple ways you can read into that. <laughs> Ashley, did you bring this specially for me to wear? Yes. Sometimes handlers aren't allowed on the stage, and I needed to make sure I got you on stage with me. So I brought an extra cosplay, just in case. Yes, plus one for Ashley. That's awesome. I can't wait to try it on and see how I look. Wait, did you say stage? Why are we going up there? Because we need to spread the word about Falk Plaza. What better way to do that than on stage in the biggest auditorium at the convention center of Max? Oh, okay, I'm in. <laughs> uh, let's find you someplace where you can change. We made our way... Sorry. <laughs> I started narrating as Ashley. We made our way to the nearest bathrooms and I changed into, into the maid outfit. Uh, I hope they make the... I hope they make the, the avatar with the... Sorry, I, I skipped over that dialogue. Once we were done, we headed backstage, which I'd say resembled the Funplex break room, but hey, same purpose, same function. Oh, you know what? I haven't been on the lookout for penguins. Unless they were only in Chapter 1. Huh. I just realized that. Uh, here, the cosplayers line wait for the big show to start, including one particular butler and a newly minted maid. A squee! You look so cute! I wish I looked half as cute as you doing this. But seriously, you're gonna have to do this with me more often. You make a perfect Alice. Alice? Right, I forget you know nothing about melee maidens. Alice is the head maid of the Neko Manor. Okay. So Angus, that's me, and Alice, that's you, are siblings fighting alongside each other to prevent other maids and butlers from taking over their estate. They fight for Lady Nice. Oh, and I almost forgot. Is it a... Oh. My God. Ashley pulls out more costume stuff from her pack. This time, it's a set of cat ears and a tail. Hell yeah. We are a cat maid, everybody. Welcome aboard, fucking meow. <laughs> oh boy. Alice is a cat girl. What? Please, now I have to see the fucking avatar, dude. Who wants to summon this puss? But, yeah, but you don't have cat ears, and I thought we were siblings. Spoilers. You don't find out that they're siblings until after you beat Angus's story arc. When the game starts, Angus has amnesia. And after you win, Alice appears and tells you everything. Angus's power is unleashed, and he becomes his old cat boy self. It also unlocks an extra skin you can play with. But now you've gotten very far off track. Satisfied? Any more questions? I think that covers it. Ashley fastens the cattail of the back. The Ashley fastens the cattail of the back of the maid dress and places the headband on my head. With the costume finalized, I take a long, hard look in the mirror. And oh, she's moving over. Here it comes. Are you ready? Woo! Oh my, oh my lord. Oh, that is terrifying. The proportions are... Ah! Holy shit! <laughs> oh, I gotta screenshot this bad boy. Yeah. Not quite what I was expecting. Not quite what I was expecting. <sighs> yeah, what's up? Chubby is Bart. You you joined at the right time, my friend. 
<sighs> Should I? Okay. Who do we know in our group? No one. No one in our group is actually a Tory. Sometimes I'm trying to think of who we slash I know that's a blonde uh, to reenact. Like I, I want to get this exact screenshot like in real life. Oh my god, Squirrel, I'm so cute. I've got Kenny and Stuffer here. Who? They're a couple of my good cosplay friends. And they're way more talented than me, even. And they just so happen to be the MCs for the cosplay parade. Ash Ashley waves over to them and they smile, waving back. I talked with them earlier. After the parade, they'll let us come up on stage and talk about Fuck Plaza. Whoa, really? Really? Thank you so much, Ashley. That'll help a ton. Yeah, it helps to know people sometimes. We found a few other cosplayers who dressed up as other Melee Maiden characters. And we all formed up into a group. Even though we were together, Ashley and I kept to ourselves safe for pleasantries. As we chatted away, the Max attendant came back to give us a final warning before we went on stage. Everyone listen up. We get 10 minutes before the parade. Make sure you're all ready to go. I think I'm experiencing performance anxiety. My heart rate's increased and I feel flushed. Oh, you're at work? I, I, would, lo I, I would love for one of your co-workers to just walk past and see what the fuck is on your screen right now. And have all the questions in the world. This pressure to look perfect is too much. Ashley, do I look okay? Are my ears on straight? What about the tail? You look fine, trust me. You're the best cat girl man I've ever seen. I bet you say that to all your cosplay friends. <laughs> I don't. Honest. Well, I think that your, what do you call it, crossplay? It's fantastic. Why did you choose to crossplay as Angus anyway? I would have expected you to be the you to be one of the one of the other fancy maids. You would have made a cute maid too. Fleef, do you have a maid fetish? What? No, never. Maybe. I crossplay because that's what makes me feel most comfortable. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the yeah the first video up last time. Well, all right. Yeah, the the first video was fine. This one is very different. At first, I dressed as various boys because I adored those characters so much, you know. But the more I did it, the more I had fun with it. The more I began to feel like me, and then I wanted to do it more and more. I'm still trying to figure out exactly. Exactly what that means in relation to who I am, and that's the confusing part. Yeah, you have a lot of thinking to do. That kind of treads into territory with which I'm not very well versed, and I don't want to say the wrong things. So I'm just going to let the dialogue play out as it is. We're just old, so we looked away pretty quick. But I guess that's all part of the journey about finding out more about myself. That's a lot of, a lot of outwards. That's all part of the journey about finding out more about myself. I know it's hard to understand, but just know that I'm working on being happy with myself. And one day. I'll be able to put words into what I'm feeling. But until then, I'll enjoy the ride. I see. Hope I didn't pressure you into sh oversharing just now. I wouldn't have shared it if I didn't feel comfortable with you. I mean this with all my heart. You are a cherished friend. Friend? Oh gosh, thanks Ashley. I really appreciate the trust you put in me. I won't let you down. Cosplayers, the time is nigh. Once again, the attendants started barking orders at us. 
We all shuffled into another line, like how we were told to do earlier, and slowly we all began filing out of the room. Yeah, I might have just been friend zoned. Um. Uh, anyway, the closer we got to the stage doors, the more I feel the nerves creep in. Why right, next? Melee Maidens group, go. Now. Ashley looks over at me, just beaming. This is her life, her everything. Take a deep breath, Flav. I close my eyes, taking in as much air as I can. I hold it for a long moment before exhaling. I open my eyes slowly and take a step into the Pac-Man theater and onto the stage. I'm following Ashley, who is following the rest of the maid and butler crew. Once all of us are on stage, the MCs announce us as the Melee Maidens group. As I look out in front of us, I can see a completely packed theater. It's hard to make out specific faces due, due to the stage lights, but I can see the outline of hundreds of people. A rush of adrenaline surges through my body and I look over to Ashley. A proper butler, she takes each step with purpose and elegance. She isn't breaking character for anything, not all the not all the cheers in the audience, not all the people smiling and laughing around her. Okay, yeah. Uh, she is Angus, and she's owning it. The announcers ask us to strike a pose on three, two, one. Uh, ooh, uh, fighting pose, coy flirting, or polite curtsy. Um, probably fighting pose? If it's melee maidens, then I assume I would have to be in a fighter pose. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the fighting pose. Oh, God. Hang on a second. Let me check something on my phone real quick. Percent. Okay. Yeah, it'll be warmer tomorrow. I think it's crossplay that makes me cringe. I, um, I, I can see that as... There's, it's just, it, if you're comfortable in your own skin, you know, the thought of changing your skin, I feel like is kind of off-putting. I don't think there's anything wrong with feeling that way. Uh, let's go fighting pose. I bring up my fists ready for some fisticuffs. Not that I've ever taken a martial arts class, but I've seen enough martial arts games to know some basic style. Yes, plus one for Ashley. We finish holding our poses long enough for everyone in the audience to get a good amount of pictures of us. And once a sufficient amount of snaps have been snapped, an MC instructs us to stay on the stage, passing Ashley a microphone for the big Fuck Plaza announcement. Thank you, everyone. It means so much to me that you could join my sister Alice and I here at Nickel Manor. As you know, we adore organizing exorbitant galas at Lady Nice's estate. However, Alice and I are planning a very extravagant, extravagant event at a very extravagant location. Go on, Alice, tell them everything. Ashley hands the mic to me. Watching her never break character has inspired me to play along too. That's right, Angus. Next weekend, we will be hosting a costume contest at Francine's Arcade Funplex at the Twin Pines Ball. It's all part of Fuck Plaza, along with the Fist of Discomfort Tournament, a world record attempt at, on Moopy's Magical Maze, and the reveal of a rare and mysterious game. I don't mind when people want to be someone else, but I don't like it when they oversaturate it. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. Yeah, and, and I'm I'm in the same boat as you. Is that if you know, like she, like Ashley was talking about earlier, you know, being comfortable in your own in your own skin, and if you're not and need to make some kind of change do it whether anyway uh once again over maybe overstepping my bounds i, I want to be careful with my words uh anyway uh oh my first first 
Uh, I, I mixed up all my voices in there. <laughs> oh my, first time the public will, will have seen it? You know it, brother. This isn't the event to miss. It will be the most noteworthy event of the season. I don't remember. This is a private affair, so please only tell your closest friends. Ashley winks to the audience before bowing. Another rush of cheers fills the theater as we walk off stage for a second time. The MCs give their closing words and dismiss the audience. As people begin exiting the auditorium, I feel my phone vibrate in my hidden dress pocket. At first, it was just a couple of vibrations, but before I could realize what was happening, my phone started seizing. What the? I pulled my phone from my pocket and saw that Funplex's face wall had over 1,000 shiny new likes. No, really, what the hell? Cos the cosplay parade is a huge part of every max and generates thousands of photos and articles online. Also, it was being live streamed. Ashley, you failed to mention that part. Wait, well, seems so nervous, and I didn't want to make it worse. And that act you just pulled now has generated a 700% increase in traffic on our site. I also gobbled up some paid keywords, so if anyone posts about cosplay at max, you will see an ad for fuck plot. Fog Plaza. Pretty genius, right? It's like when you click on images of made outfits while while surf. Take two. It's like when you click on images of made outfits while you're surfing the internet, and then see an ad for buying one right in your face wall. Oh, it looks like you finally got one. Ha ha ha! A busted. Iris, stop looking at my browser history. But that's deeply embedded within my program. Fine, just keep that private, okay? Done. Quickly, I scanned my own face wall, and even people I knew who weren't arcaders were talking up a storm about it. Good job, hell yeah. See, that's that's um, that's why I, I was almost thinking about going with Teo, because I figured there would we would be able to incorporate some kind of advertisement into the. Uh, that uh, flash mob so I think I chose correctly uh, also I want to see holy shit no Ashley's on top now fuck oh no we got to get Naomi back up oh crap I also could hear cosplayers discussing it as we waited for the auditorium to clear out I can't wait till next weekend that plaza thing sounds like a blast. I don't know this. Ding. And I am totally going to that farm place. place. But, but I want to wear my car play there. <laughs> Leif, wake that up. I had lots of help from you too, Ashley. Don't count yourself out. We make a pretty great team. It was great to hear all the buzz around the cosplay community, and Iris really helped with the social media aspect. Can't believe it was that easy. I mean, tiring, but easy. That was great fun and all, but I'm completely exhausted. Me too. I need a break from all this. Some time to collect my thoughts and rest my eyes from all those flashing lights. I'm still seeing spots. You hear that Gavin and Naomi are running a pop-up arcade for the Funplex? A bunch of other local arcades are doing the same over in Hall B. It might be worth stopping by for a breather with some friends. And make sure they aren't slacking. Yes, Naomi's over there. Gotta go get her. It sounds like a solid plan. Wanna come with me? Not quite yet. I need to do some touch-ups on my makeup. How about I meet you there later? Great, see you soon. I wave bye to Ashley as I make my way toward the restrooms to get changed back into my usual clothes for the time being. And then it's off to Exhibit Hall B on the lookout for Gavin's serious face or Naomi's kind one. Must find Naomi. Must find Naomi. Let's see. Exhibit Hall B. It very much resembles Exhibit Hall A where I started my day. Industry types, dealers, swag, crowds, 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 error. <laughs> But there's definitely more actual arcade games here, as local places have set up pop-up arcades all over the place. 
It's hard to notice the smaller displays with the giant, garish Deco's Palace display eating up the center. But I managed to crawl my way around the edges to find... Oh, Naomi! Damn, everybody's there. Well, not pretty much everybody else in the crew. Save for Francine. Tao and Ashley are still off hanging out with their respective communities. I've got some time. Maybe I can bend someone's ear. Meanwhile, let's see whatever... Let's see what's everybody doing right now. Gotta go to Naomi. Naomi first. Naomi's fixing up a busted gal. Guys, she could use a break. Yes, look at her. Yeah, that's maybe it's too creepy to say. Why well, she's turned around? Uh, Naomi looks totally frustrated with the monitor chassis. Chassis? Yeah. With the monitor chassis for her game partially removed so she can tinker with it. There's definitely a neck glow, so the neck can't be cracked. So why am I getting nothing at all? Hey, Naomi. Oh, Fleef! Sorry, I was wrapped up in my own little world there. What's up? I'm taking a break. And as of now, you're on break as well. That's sweet, but I really can't... You're getting nowhere with that game. Take a break. Consider it in order. I guess I'm on break then. Cool, cool. You want to get away from the crowd for a bit? Find a quiet corner and hang out and decompress a bit? Absolutely. I can busy myself with the games, but uh, I hate crowds. I always have. Every year I go to Max. Naomi reaches out and grabs my hand before I can object. And drags us off to a semi-quiet little niche between two display booths. Good for a private conversation. Okay, no broken games, no chattering strangers. Good. Honestly, I love my retro games, but I wish they'd break down less often. All this 1980 fuck tech is fun to play with, except when downtime is lost profits. Okay, so I gotta know, why the fixation on retro games? I'm not saying they aren't cool, it's just not something our... F it's take two. I'm not, I'm not saying... <laughs> Take three. I'm not saying they aren't cool. It's just not something folks our age are usually into, right? I'd contest that with posts by 20-somethings on classic game collector sites. But you're really asking why I'm into this stuff. And hey, what's not to love? The cool glow of a cathode ray tube, blooming color through the scan lines, the simple and clean pixel art style, one stick, a few buttons, easy to learn, hard to master. You can keep your crazy networked real-time strategy beat em up esports fighter thingies. Give me a maze or a spaceship or a bunch of dots any day. I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat there. An well, esports, e mm, yeah, I, yeah. Easy to learn, hard to master. Or a princess to rescue and turtles to jump on. Hell yeah. Right. Uh, more of the jumping than the rescuing. Not enough games have princesses rescuing princes. Or cats. Or anything really. So how'd you get started with retro games? Dude, retro retro games are my jam. As, as you've seen with, with some of my other choices for streaming games often the more pixelated jams and all that uh, well I know the cliche answer is I had an older brother who introduced me to games but that's basically the truth sort of indirectly I guess for a whole summer my jerk of a brother was in charge of babysitting me and being a teenager he didn't want to bother he wanted to go to the arcade and hang out with his friends so he dragged little old me with him to the arcade, gave me his fist full of tokens, and told me to go keep myself busy. At first I played with all the kids, ticket games, prize games, but I got bored with it fast, realizing I wasn't winning much of anything. Honestly, kids are smart, right? They gotta realize they're being scammed. Well, PS1 and SNES. Yeah, man. I, I, that's... And that, that, that comes down to like the, the tricky thing about all this streaming business is I know, I know we got to play the games we enjoy and I do enjoy games like this and like when I streamed Golf Story and um, 
when I streamed Splatoon and Soviet Jump Game and all that stuff like that. But it's like, if I if I managed, if I were able to like bring in and keep an audience playing just like the classic retro games and stuff that I have, like that would be almost exclusively what I'd be doing. There is a retro category. Yeah, there is. And it's, I, I, I feel like it's slight. Mm, I guess that varies. It's, it's something I'll have to look into to see like what's the best way to draw in an audience playing some of those more classic retro type games. Uh, anyway, so yuck, uh, enough kids are blind to make the scam work. When you really want to toy with all your heart, or it depends on the game, which were you playing? What would Naomi want to hear? Uh, I need her in my life. Being really good at the games really like helps a lot. Yeah, it does. Um. Sorry, not, not not my train of thought is leaving the station. Uh, so your kids, are, your kids are blind enough. Enough kids are blind to make the scam work. That's that's kind of mean though. They're just kids. So I'll probably I'll probably go with the green heart option. I, I think that's the most that's the one she'd most want to hear. Because what I really want to do eventually is I want to stream. If you're really super good, if you're really good at Super Mario World and you use retro as category, people will tune in a long time. At least I would. All right, good to know. And dig up that tag. Because a lot there, there are also a lot of retro games that I would, I would have to tag as a blind playthrough. Because I, I really want to eventually stream my first time playing Final Fantasy 6. So I keep hearing that's one of the best Final Fantasies and I've never played it before. So I didn't have an SNES growing up. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to go with this one while this conversation is going. People love blind playthroughs too. That Yeah, I, I think I think they do. So it, 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 does, it feels like it allows people to do like in a non-rude way some backseat gaming and you know, watching people something experience something they love for the first time, I feel like gives you a little bit of like residual joy. So it's it's something I'll, I'll look into. There's there's other games on my backlog, and then other like new games coming up soon, and a, a lot of stuff we're trying to balance. But it, it, that, that it's very reassuring hearing that coming from you, dude. So I appreciate that. So. Uh, back to Naomi. Uh, don't be so hard on kids. I've worked the floor for weeks. I've seen how fixated a kid can get on some high-ticket plushie. And you've made up your mind and already spent piles of tokens, but you gotta keep going. Otherwise, you'd have to admit it wasn't worth it. Yes! Plus one, Naomi! Tied for first. Hell yeah. Nostalgia is, nostalgia is big. Mm. All right, anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's cruel, the sunk cost fallacy. I wish I could just give those kids the toy they want, or, I don't know, sell it. But no way Gavin would allow that. Most of all, there was one other problem with the ticket game area. Too many kids, just way too many kids I didn't know from schools I didn't go to. I was too timid to ask someone to leave a game I wanted to play, or even to hover around them worried they might talk to me. I'm not really good with strangers, huge crowds of them. Once I get to know someone, well, they're not a stranger. That's different. Like you. I got I got to know you quickly enough. Hell yeah. Considering she gave me her lunch on day one. Quickly, indeed. But there was one area of the arcade which had next to nobody playing games. Where I didn't need to put a quarter up to wait in line. Where everything was fun. Retro games. Exactly. Only a few older guys back there. I, I could play anything I wanted. Every game was a single token, and it was all so amazingly cool and flashy and colorful and... Oh, it was paradise. Those games were my new best friends. Now, 
Now I looked forward to my jerk of a brother abandoning me in the arcade to go play fighting games. Eventually summer vacation ended and it was back to school, but I kept visiting arcades, especially ones with good retro collections. So that's how I got into classic arcade games. Oh my god, another dilemma. Shit. Oh, do do do, and that's how you caught Pac-Man fever. The only prescription is more Pac-Man. That one's okay. I don't know. A young girl alone with a bunch of older gamer dudes seems inadvisable. Uh, I don't like that your mind goes there. Did you have any favorites in particular? Ooh, that's tough. I'm stuck on one or three. The only prescription is more Pac-Man. Ugh. I'll say this, they do a great job of masking which choice will be the one to get you a plus one. Ah, Muta. Water. Oh, drink me water. Um... Fever. Do you have any favorites in particular? Mm, shit. This one has so much more personality. But that's singling it. I feel like that's singling it out into just one game. So I might go with number three. You probably like sharing your favorite. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're 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 in agreement. Threes. Let's go with three. So what games did you play at the arcade? Any standouts in your memory? Yes! Yes, we did it, Doc! We got another plus one. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna save this just in case. And now look at that. Yes, pulling away. Oh shit, uh, I missed I think I missed one piece of dialogue here. Uh, of course, Pac-Man, Dig Dug, I mean, all the standards. But I loved Pengo. Cute little penguin kicking ice blocks around. You had to really think ahead and play that game well, too. It took skill. I found a plushie... Oh, there's your... There's your penguin. Oh my god, it all comes together. Dude. Just like the last 30 seconds. It just... Mm done it well done game well done writers i found a plushy penguin once with red fur at a toy store bought it immediately made a purple bow tie for it and that was my pengo plushie it's still in my workshop in fact the plushie i mean not the game i wish we had the game i know it's a little weird for me to not be interested in newer games and it's not like new games are universally awful pengo in the in the back yeah, you're right, the poster. Oh, shit. Good catch. Uh, but I like what I like. I love what I love. I do what I love for a living. How cool is that? As long as the fun plex stays open and keeps its retro spirit bright, I'll be happy. Well, event manager Fleef will see to it that we keep our doors open. That's why I'm here at Max, to make this event the big deal it deserves to be. Thanks so much for that. I'm no good at the meet and greet stuff. I think we should both get back to what we do best. For the glory of Funplex. For the glory of Funplex. The two of us make our way back to the mini Funplex. Her to resume tinkering, me to catch up with Teo and Ashley again. I don't want to talk to Teo. My current status, sitting and enjoying it. I, ah, yes, glorious fuck plaza. It took a few minutes of searching and stalking, but eventually I found an open seat in the pop-up arcade. While the sit is satisfying, the rest of everything else is miserable. My feet are sore from walking all over, and I don't remember the last time I ate. I feel dehydrated, and I have a slight headache from all the noise. There's still four more hours of max left. 
But if Gavin saw me in my current state, leaning back, arms at my side, completely exhausted, I can picture it clearly. He'd be looming over me, over me with his dark, unfettered eyes. He would lean in close and frown. Grumbling, he'd say, Fleef, may I remind you, these seats are for patrons only. I audibly sighed just thinking about it. As luck would have it, though, Gavin and Naomi are huddled over the Galaga cabinet, trying to figure out why the monitor is not working. Freedom! My buns are experiencing the best freedom has to offer. And while my body feels like it could collapse at any minute, I feel good about it. Dude, that's, that's how cons make you feel. They make you feel physically fucking exhausted, but in, in like the best way. Getting the word out about Fuck Plaza was great. Seeing people's faces light up with excitement is why I'm really here. Plus, spending time with Ashley was an added bonus. She certainly got passion to spare. I smiled to myself. The pain in my heels and the grumbling in my tummy. Worth it. While enjoying the respite, I let my eyes close for a moment. And of course, the second I do that, I hear footfalls closing in. No, go away. There you are, Fleef. They've been looking all over for you. But we were specifically going to meet up here at the Funplex pop-up arcade. Yes, but we didn't expect you to be tucked into the darkest corner of the arcade. I'm hiding from Gavin. He'll put me at work if he sees me. I didn't mind the pinball machines. It's probably not that smart. It's twice that. You know how much he loves pinball? I have a small moment who thinks no one is watching him. Despite getting that high score. I have so many kind of pictures on my phone of him playing pinball. You have to show me. Like right now. I guess his concentration face is so cute. Before I can even react, Ashley has her phone out and is scrolling through pictures of Gavin. Uh -huh. Both look up at me guiltily. Don't we have more important matters? Max is over in a few hours, and we will have a lot of work left to do. You're right, Flav. Please don't talk, Gavin. Your secret is safe with me. Also, I may need to look at those later. For science. Yep, for science. Got it. <laughs> right, so this is time. I think I've got something. Go on. I have a friend. She's an indie arcade developer. The new title she's been working on is amazing. It's got co-op, it's got competition, it's got magical school girls. Now you're talking. It's got it all. Wait, I'm pretty sure I've heard of this game. Is it called Magical Moon Cuties? I'm just thinking about promoting it at Fuck Plaza. Oh my gosh, it would be cooler than cool. Sounds interesting enough. Might make for another fun game for people to play. Definitely. My friend is somewhat renowned in the industry. And the game's been in development for years. I'm sure it would create some buzz at least. Are you kidding? Oh god, I started squeaking into Elmo again. Are you kidding me, Tao? We'd be the talk of the arcade world. I do like being the talk of world-sized things. Let's go check it out. I stand up, invigorated by the news. As I start walking back toward the hall with Tao, I hear a call from behind me. A wait. I turn around and see Ashley standing there, fidgeting. Her green eyes are darting back and forth nervously. Ashley? I, too, have a plan. She motions, motions for us to come back towards her, which we do. What's your idea, Ashley? She puts an arm around Teo and another around me, huddling the three of us together. Oh my, what are you thinking? So what I'm proposing might not be the most legal course of action. Uh, do I even want to know? You've seen the huge monitors hanging from the ceiling in the middle of the major halls, right? How can I miss them? They're constantly bombarding us with ads and false hopes of high-quality convention food. No matter how amazingly tempting, that night of the hot dog looks on the big screen, don't even think about it! Exactly my point. No, sorry. 
Exactly my point. Everyone's looking at it. I know a way to sneak into the back area. All we have to do is break into the main communication center and upload the flyer fleet main into the rotation. You want to do that? Keep your voice down, Tail. Unless you want to get arrested for being an accomplice. It's a genius plan. Everyone at the match will see our name in lights. Okay, so yeah, that's a less than legal way of getting the word out. But I have to admit, you've got me intrigued. And it'd definitely work, but I don't know. Trust me. Of course we need to go in disguise. I'm already nicely disguised. But Fleef, you would need to switch into something more distracting. Why more distracting, exactly? To distract from your face, of course. I mean, it's a very good face. Why would anyone want to be distracted from it? I know, I certainly wouldn't. Oh my. What I'm trying to say is, people will remember the costume, not the person wearing it. Which means... Made Fleet friends again! No, that's a stupid idea. I knew it. Come on, you did so grand stage. Think of this as your encore. How about it? Let's not forget about Magic Girl Moon, kiddies. It's a valid alternative. Both options are valid, honestly. Splashy advertising would certainly drive foot traffic, even if getting it up there would be dodgy. Importantly, Iris could help us do it safely without anyone noticing. Safer than Ashley going off on her own to try this inadvisable stunt. But a highly anticipated indie title might do the trick and result in far less jail time. Uh, yeah, I really don't trust the sneaking into the other room. But I also don't want to go with Teo. I'm kind of leaning towards Teo. It, it seems much safer. And it's like we, we did a good job getting the word out. People saw me in the maid costume, so they know it's the guy advertising Fuck Plaza. Oof. So. See, so yeah, I think I might, I think I might have to go with Teo on this one. Because then getting a, getting a new game would, uh, you know, would be one more thing to drive in. Because, I mean, having a good mix of classic and indie and, and the rare zombie shooter and the super popular, whatever else is going on in there, I feel like having that nice mix is advisable. What time is it? 8.52. You know what? I'm going to... I'm going to take a quick break. I got to use the little boy's room. So... Um, I think my away screen actually has this up there, so um, I'll people, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'll be, I'll be right back. Bar.
All right, I have returned. Anyway, I'm sticking with my guns. Go with Teo. Oh shit, please. Oh shit. Uh, that could be a problem if Ashley's still gonna try and do it. She's gonna get herself fucked over. Excuse me. Ashley, you got this. You don't need any help from me. Yeah, just don't fucking have her do it. It's just a bad idea in general. Honestly, I don't feel like getting Carter off to jail today. It's not on my scheduled agenda. Plus, I'm pretty sure Ashley can handle breaking and entering all by herself. What the fuck? That is a terrible idea. And yes, I do realize how wrong that sounds, even in my own head. I bet you've seen plenty of heist anime. So much that you can sneak into the Natural History Museum and steal the world's biggest Fabergé egg in the middle of the day. I've got like 12 bobby pins holding this wig on. I won't let you down. I know you won't, and please try to be careful. Ashley smiles wildly before prancing off into a crowd of arcade folk. I can stop running, Fluff. Ashley knows what she's doing. That's why I'm worried. So we're going to see a lady about an indie film? We shall. God, I don't want to be around Teo. Not interested in you. Leave me alone. As we left the pop-up and traveled deep into the halls of Max, people kept stopping us to say hello to Teo. We'd be happily on our merry little way and then get interrupted by a random person. Hey, Teo. Oh, the, oh man, it's Teo. How you doing? Well, I'll have a run around the middle of someone. Let's get up later. Oh, cool. Laterish. Lowish. Lowish. Uh, uh, and this happened every couple minutes. Walking through the convention floor was like walking through a mine f through a field of landmines. I was going to say minefield, but that's uh, where instead of explosions, it was uncomfortable introductions to people I will probably never see again. Eventually, Teo leads me back to a section of arcade games hidden behind all the major companies' booths, near where he held his dance flash mob. What they set up here is mostly reminiscent of the rest of Max. Arcade cabinets are closely lined up side by side by side, making several aisles for gamers to aimlessly wander down. I would have expected to be more used to pushing my way through throngs of crowds by now, but nope. Taylor and I forced our way through huddled masses of chittering conversations. As I look around all the different arcade games that surround us, I notice something's off. There are exactly zero titles that I actually recognize. No Dig Dug, Gauntlet, nor Street Fighter, not even a hint of a pinball game. I was starting to get concerned. Teo, where in Max are we? This is the Indie Mega Arcade. Well, I went to where they called it the Indie Mega Arcade Expo, but then I not sued them. The what? That didn't explain anything to me. What are all these weird games? I can't keep doing this voice. This voice fucks me up a little bit. I understand nothing. I had to use those alluring lips of yours for a second. I'd be more than happy to explain. You wanna... Oh, Teo, I believe the best way to hush my lips is with yours? That is... What the fuck? Dude. You've never spoken that way about any of the other people. Why Teo? He's at the bottom of the barrel. Look at him. Bottom of the heap. What the fuck? There's exactly what I wish I was brave enough to say. God. And I said the sloppy words that fell from my mouth were... Okay, I'm hushing now. Totally and completely hushed. Thanks, love. Now, where was I? I was... The Indian Mega Arcade is a huge area of Max that showcases all the new and upcoming Indian Arcade games. And the developers get a chance to show off their stuff. 
get useful feedback, and maybe get a few people interested in that game along the way. That's the dream of the end of life, to make it games that people can enjoy playing. I really don't know much about the indie arcade scene, admittedly. Working at the Funplex offers me a crash course in arcade culture. Every day I'm learning about about completely new aspects. It does make perfect sense to have an indie game scene. I just never realized that it existed. It's actually pretty amazing. A community of people who share ideas and a passion. Can afford mass production runs of games, but still have got a lot of heart, you know? I can't get the hell. I think we got a box of our of, uh, for, uh, five. Sorry, I, I can't keep doing that voice. That, it like, the way I have to like tease my throat with it for a little bit. Like, I can do it for short periods of time, but I, I can't keep extending it out like that. So, I, I, I might take it back to the the side mouth Peter Griffin ish voice. Whew. It was fun while it lasted, but... Whew, okay. They can't crank out a box for every arcade game on Earth. But indie developers are free to make whatever type of game they want. No pressure from a big-name company, either. Complete with complete and utter creative freedom. Really, anyone can make a game if you put your mind to it. In fact, I bet you... I bet even you, Fleef, can make an arcade game. What say you? The game would be spectacular. Don't we have other things to focus on right now? Or yeah, I've toyed with the idea. Well, he's... As far as I know, he's never toyed with the idea. So to say his game would be spectacular. Um, can't we go the scientific route? We do have other things to focus on. Yep, I'm doing it can't deny that when I was younger, I oft wondered about making my own game. That's oh fuck, come on, that's the first time you mentioned anything about that. But let's be real here, I don't have time for that now. Diving headfirst into a creative endeavor would be interesting, but I'll leave that to the professionals. Right now, I'm focused on Fuck Plaza. Starting another project on top of that wouldn't make much sense. Dreams aren't supposed to make sense. You just feel them. So, follow me on a dream. What game would you make? Final play along, but only to indulge you. I would make... I'd make a romance game. I'd design a super cute puzzle game. A roguelike, procedurally generated, open world, twin stick platformer with loot box. Oh god, loot boxes. Um, super cute puzzle game or romance game. Why is romance game the funny option? Or is it funny because it's, it's a metal wink at this, this game here? Um, I don't know. Puzzle game, if you're talking about like a, like a Candy Crush or whatever the fuck. What's that one? That is that one game that's advertised by like this little cartoon bear that always shows up on on ads. Anyway, I'll do a romance game. I don't know exactly how a romance arcade game... Oh, arcade game. Fuck. I screwed that up. But again, I don't care. I don't want to... Wu Teo. I don't know how exactly a romance arcade game would work, but I'm all about creating new genres. I was thinking some sort of game where you can date and romance people. Plus one for Teo. Yeah. Also takes place in an arcade. A game about arcade romance in an arcade. Yeah. Really the core of the game would take an in-depth look at all the different aspects of arcade communities and how they function and interact with each other. All right, I, I see what you're doing. Ah, uh, yes, a bit slow for a coin app arcade game, but also plenty of kissing and touching butts. Ah, okay. Now you're speaking my language, which is the language of love. Too easy. I like it. Well, if you ever get super bored of being an arcade event manager, I can hook you up with all the proper people to launch your second career. What do you mean? Oh, well, I have some friends who make arcade games for a living. Some friends? 
As soon as I said it, I became vastly aware of the situation. Since we stepped foot into the Indie Mega Arcade, people have been waving and nodding to Teo, not to mention all those people stopping us on the way to get over here. I'd say you have more than some friends. What? You're a popular on, guy. That's silly. He waves his hand, waving off the very notion that I, that I know to be true. Everyone who everyone knows who he is, and I had no idea. Teo has always been such a crowd pleaser at Showtime stage, but I guess his popularity spread to all facets of his life. Dance champion and indie arcade scene champion, huh? I try to keep my friends' circles pretty separate. Sometimes it's not always perfect, and they tend to overlap. You know, like a Max. But hey, it's got upsides. All my friends are here. The biggest downside of Max is it's just so hard to see everyone. I never get to spend enough time with them, you know? I got friends here in the Indie Mega Arcade. I got my Funplex crew. I got the dancing community. I just can't see them all. <sighs> and when I can't see them, I feel like I let them down. I hate having to choose between them. Once again, I've failed my friends. You know, it's a surprise anyone still talks to me anymore. Damn. Teo sighs heavily. His mood shifted from excitement to utter solace. The cool, collected Teo is showing a side I've not seen yet. I guess he's able to experience emotion other than joy. Confirmed. Teo is not a joy robot. But this is right. A sad Teo is worse Teo. As his friend, I must fix this. Can't please everyone. Allow me to boost your ego. He doesn't need an ego boost. You haven't let me down. Uh, that's probably not what he wants to hear. He does. He wants to please everyone, and hearing him say that is uh, probably say you haven't let me down. Teo's been working so hard for everyone else's sake, for my sake too. He gives so much and asks for nothing in return. Without you, none of this would be possible. Plus one for Teo. Where's he at now? He's climbing. But Percy's second to last. I want to give him a bump. At least get him past Gavin. Huh? What do you mean, pal? This morning, I thought the end was nigh. But once I met up with you and Ashley, a calm washed over me. Heck, I couldn't have spread the word about Fuck Plaza all by myself. You've been a real help in getting the word out. Yeah, well, there's nothing really. I live to help my friends out. I've seen so many of your friends stop and say hello to you. Plus, they completely understood when you told them you were busy. Not one left without a smile on their face. They really care about you. You know what, Fleef? You're right. The more I hang out with Teo, the more I learn about him. It's always something new and something unexpected, and the more I want to get to know him. Let's bring this back around to why I'm here. How did you get involved in the arcade scene anyway? That's not... You completely contradicted yourself just there. Let's bring this back around to why we're here. You're here to go talk to the that indie developer of that two-player whatever game and now you want to get into his history about how he got in the scene come on dude focus through michelle an indie developer i want you to meet okay thank you for for re-railing this conversation i met her a few years ago at a previous mix i was hanging out with my crew near the dancing games and she stopped by to play around since she, saw, since she was new to the scene, I struck up a conversation with her, much like when I met you. I said there was plenty of flirting then. I can't help myself when surrounded by such beautiful, wonderful people. But you, Fleef, are by far the most incredible person to waltz into my life. I'm a puddle. I just melted to the max show floor. Someone please call life alert. I've fallen and I can't get up. Must regain composure. And Michelle makes indie arcade games. She's one. She's only one of the coolest and most prolific arcade developers in the industry today. She's worked on several big name indie indie games, and she's not. And when she's not working, she's speaking all over the world about arcade development. 
Tell me impressed. Sounds like Michelle is the sort of influential person who could really help with Fuck Plaza. She really is. Oh, crap. The new voice. Um, I thought of... I thought of another voice earlier today that I wanted to use, but I don't remember what the fuck it was. Uh, so many... Should I just maybe I'll just give them like a give her fuck. Sorry, I'm 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 stalling here for a minute. I'm trying to think of what voice, if any new voice I want to give Michelle. Should I just give her like the robot voice? Yeah, let's give her like a robot voice. I'm what now, Mateo Alvarez. You're oh, Michelle, only the worst person I've ever met. As to be expected from somebody of your caliber. You had two shade. I was just looking for you, by the way. Well, I'm glad I found you then. What's on your mind? I wanted to introduce you to Fleef. Nice to meet you. The pleasure is mine. It took me a second, but Michelle totally looks like, uh, uh-oh. You aren't, perchance, also a federal agent. This is it. I'm doomed. It was a setup. I'm about to be renditioned to a CIA black site. Who, me? No way. Although my sister, well, I can neither confirm nor deny what she does for a living. I see, I see, sorry, take two. I see, okay, that makes sense. Gotcha, I'm gonna shut up now and focus on arcade stuff. Uh, okay, I see why that sentence was so weird. Oh, I know what I should do with, with her voice, I think. Still stick with the robot thing, but kind of tease it a little bit. Uh, anyway, I think what Fleek was trying to say is that you seem to have a very confident and authoritative expression. That's all. Yep, that's exactly what I meant. Got it on the nose. Thanks, Teo. Sure, okay. Let's go with that. Anyway, I spoke with Teo earlier today, and he told me you had business proposition. Consider me all ears. Allow me to elaborate. Fleef here was recently appointed as the event manager for the Funplex. Congratulations. That's a... Uh, what should I do? That's a cute little mom and pop place where Teo gets his groove on, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with that. I, I, don't, I don't like that voice that much, but... I don't know what else to do. I would categorize it as more like a grandma and grandpa kind of arcade. It's not the fanciest one out there, but it's got heart. I like an arcade with a good heart. It reminds me of my youth as a toaster. <laughs> the good old days when you walk into your home, away from home, quarter up, and enjoy the company. But I digress, getting too swept up in memories. Tell me more about the proposal. Leafers putting on a special event at the fun place called Fuck Plaza. It's a celebration of the arcade scene, if you will. Oh, I will. We're going to have high score competitions, esports stuff, mystery game reveals, the works. I'm going all out on it. And Teo, I take it you're going to have a dance off dance event as well? He is. But it'd be great if we could add one more thing to the list. Maybe the premiere of a new indie game? They gasp. Could you possibly mean my game, Magical Moon Cuties? If you'll allow us the honors. Have I given you the elevator pitch yet? Oh my god, come on. I don't care. All I know is there's, there are magical schoolgirls and I'm intrigued. It's a competitive cooperative puzzle game where people have to work together to match all the magical orbs before their opponents can. I think three player magical drop, but with combo attacks. Everyone plays as a different adorable magical schoolgirl, hence the cuties part. It sounds better than the last time I heard it. Right? 
I'm pretty excited to share magical moon cuties to the world. I've been mostly doing some sel very selective demos or for our media outlets today, but so far the general public hasn't been allowed to play it. I'm looking for the perfect place and time to release it. Big publicity would mean I might land a manufacturing contract or a publisher so I could do a wide release. Fuck Plaza. Might be a good choice for that, but I'm going to need a little more convincing. What else you got? Okay, Fleef, don't blow this. Connected with Teo, she already knows that. It's all about the heart of the arcade, maybe. Think of all the exposure you get. How about the exposure? Mmm. Ah, uh, shit, two or three. Stuck. Do I try to appeal to the soul? Because it worked with Hamza. Francine encouraged me to use a lot of heart in, you know, in, in this whole job scene and whatnot. Shit. Think of all the exposure you'd get. But she already knows about that, too. So I feel like number two is probably the best option. I'm going two. She had mentioned earlier she likes an arcade that has heart and soul. Yes! I should appeal to that. Where are we going to find an arcade that has more spirit than the Funplex? Everyone who frequents, frequents there, employees and patrons alike, want nothing more for this event to succeed. Okay, sorry. Uh, this is our chance to show the world our dreams. We've been pouring all of our combined energy into making Fuck Plaza victorious. Teo, myself, all the staff, all the gamers. With magical moon cuties on our side, we can just bring even more heart to this affair. It's the perfect fit for the kind of friendly atmosphere we want, bringing people together. Oh, uh, oi, you got me right in the feels. Plus, I really want to play Magical Moon Cuties, too. Ah, uh, fair enough. I was just sassing you anyway. After I discussed it with Teo, I already knew I was going to show Magical Moon Cuties at the Funplex. Love that enthusiasm, though. Really? Really? I mean, it's either Funplex or Deco's Palace. And while Deco is the heavyweight champion of the arcade world, it's not a good fit for my dreams. Great, so it's settled. Yeah, I think so. I know so. Magical Moon Cuties will have its first playable showing to the public at Fuck Plaza. Shell's uh, Michelle is a robot for now. It's I was running out of uh, what voices I wanted to do. I rem. I had another voice in mind this morning, but I completely forgot what it was. So, like, at the last minute, I decided to make her a robot. I'll haul my prototype cabinet over to your... She's talking about her body. I'll haul my prototype cabinet over to your arcade the day before so you can get it set up. I'd appreciate you keeping it hidden until the event, though. Already bought a, mis already bought a mystery conceal... Take two. Already bought a mystery concealing tarp for our rare game release. Heck, what's one more mystery concealing tarp between friends? This will be an event to remember, and I'm so thrilled. I can't wait to share the news with everyone. All of my refrigerator friends. Lee, thanks for the support. I really appreciate it. Uh, oh, I, sh I should really be thanking you. Ah, oh, fuck. Um. Sorry to cut this combo off. But Michelle, you're not just whatever. It's Mark from Hexagon. Mark, Hexagon, computing. <laughs> uh, it's so hard to keep track of all these different media outlets. Leaf, it's been great. My people will call your people or whatever they do these days. Oh, expect your social media to explode later today. Ta-ta. Shutting down. And in flash, Michelle wandered back into a crowd of people. Her friend leading her into the next interview, leaving me standing in shock, un unable to believe what had happened. Top indie designer premiering at my event. I imagine the adorable smiling faces of anime magical schoolgirls. I could practically hear them cheering me on. I knew everything would be okay. This is my life? Huh? Oh, nothing, just musing to myself. 
Out loud, nonetheless. No worries. I do that all the time, pal. Mostly when I'm alone, though. But overall, that went really well. I'm glad that Michelle was really excited to bring her game to the Funplex. Me too. Honestly, I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. What with Ashley helping me, helping me with the hype at the cosplay contest, I feel like Fuck Plaza is going to be amazing. That's the spirit. I never doubted you for a second, pal. I was about to reply with a totally witty retort about doubting in time. However, we were interrupted by the sounds of a bell chime. The hall will be closing in 30 minutes. It's over already? I don't know, it's just getting started. I'd barely seen anything yet. I could do this for at least another four hours. I'm frightened and confused as to how you still have so much energy left, Teo. I amaze even myself sometimes. As for me, I was exhausted, allowing yawns to escape my mouth. Well, I'm officially pooped and ready to go home. I still wanted to squeeze in a couple more games before the hall closes. They are going to have to drag you out of the hall once it closes, aren't they? Kicking and screaming. Thanks for your help with Fuck Plaza today. That's what friends are for. And I'm glad to have you as a friend. Ditto. See you back at the arcade, Fleef. With our pleasantries exchanged, I left Teo to finish the dying seconds of Max in the Indie Mega Arcade. All in all, a successful day. Beep boop, Leaf. You have a new text message. Operation Hot Dog Takedown. Mission complete. Asset extracted and heading home for a leisurely bath and some anime. Ooh. Oh, she fucking did it. Holy crap. Good for her. Huh? She hacked the video signs and snuck away. Look at the screens. Our flyers are airing there now. Wow, I didn't know Ashley was a hacker. Maybe we should swap tips. No, oh, don't say it like that. <laughs> I'd like the Funplex to commit fewer felonies rather than more, Iris. Ah, uh, okay. Right, time to head home. I promised I would meet Juniper outside the main exit of the hall, and that's exactly where I was headed. The rush of fresh air hit me as I pushed the double glass doors open. It was nice, refreshing. And I had a much better smell than the one, and had a much better smell than the one I had been around all day. Oh, crap, I gotta do her voice too. Shot. I think this chapter's about to wind down, so. Ah, oh, shit. These games are crushing my voice. I didn't have to wait long until I saw Juniper. She bounced happily up to see me. So, how was your first max, Fleef? It was... Yeah, it's fantastic. The amount of support I got from my friends today was amazing. I know I can always count on them, and I feel like we've bonded closer as friends. Can't wait to go back next year. That's to be expected with a convention. Although, in your case, you really outdid yourself and got smacked with 300% of what anyone else would have, yeah? How do you figure? Well, most people drop by Max, play some games, maybe attend a panel or two, and do some shopping. They're here to be catered to. You, on the other hand, were doing the catering. And, I, and, and like any good caterer, that means spinning plates and doing, what, 12 different things at once. You found interesting ways to push fuck plaza and promote the funplex as a whole. You worked your butt off to do it. So, rather than attending Max, you were Max. Sure feels that way. I'm totally drained. I kind of envy you, you know. Sounds like you had some great adventures today. Other than designing that flyer. I didn't do much beyond playing a few games, buying cute t-shirts and stuff. Well, let me tell you, they're really super cute shirts. Sure. Sure. I'm glad I could support you, though, even if it was just, you know, 
doodling, doodling up a flyer. That's hardly a doodle. You did great work designing it, or trust me, you're better off not being a caterer. It was rough. Let's say you did a great job designing it. You don't sell yourself short. That flyer looks super professional. I mean, no comic sans, but still pretty cool. Thankfully, you're really enjoying stuff like that. I, I really enjoy doing stuff like that. Wow, I said the sentence entirely wrong. I don't exactly get a lot of opportunities at the office to express myself. Okay, let's get home and get some real rest. We both earned it. In fact, I'd say we took it. Juniper, don't. To the max! Ugh. <laughs> After that moment, the rest of the evening was a blur. I knew that Juniper and I took the train back home, heated up some pizza bagels, and I made it safely into my comfy bed. I think I was still in shock. At the beginning of this day, I thought no one was going to know the fuck plaza. We'd be stuck as a relatively unknown mom and pop arcade. But now it seems like the whole world knows, which is great, but also pretty nerve wracking. I sighed heavily, letting all my mixed emotions flow over me. There was no turning back now. What I set in motion will stay in motion. It can only get bigger and better from here. At least that's what I'm going to keep telling myself as I drift to sleep. I'm proud of what I, what I accomplished today. And I can't wait to tell everyone at the Funplex about all I've done. I hope they're proud of me, too. And before I know it, Fuck Plaza will be upon us. Whew. You've cleared level three of Arcade Spirits. A winner is you. Now let's see your score. Looks like you're really hit hitting it off with Naomi. Perfect. That's exactly the way I wanted it. You're proving to be a gentle, sweet, and compassionate soul. Yeah. Damn. The... Alright. Also, you've scored 11,950 points. Go for the high score. Actually, I don't know what the high score is, but hey, go for it anyway. You want to save your game before proceeding to level 4? And I don't think I'm going to be proceeding to level 4 on this stream. Because my throat is all, it's, it's done, it's shot. Also, I'm hungry, I really haven't eaten much today. Mm. Okay, so that is gonna be the end of my stream today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. If you are new to the channel, please feel free to follow and sub to our channel. Subbing will get you access to our Discord and access to currently our one and only email. Uh, thank you, Gibbo, for the kind words. Um, subbing, sorry. Subbing, subbing will get you access to the Discord and access to our currently one and only emote. Uh, our dog, we'll, we'll, we'll call her our dog mascot, Evie. It's uh, an adorable little, little pooch making this really uh, funny derpy face. And we have ideas for more emotes that we wanted to design, but we need more subs in order to do so. So hit that sub button for us if you please. My name is Luby. I stream on Wednesdays and Fridays, and our channel is comprised of multiple streamers. And between us, we stream pretty much every night of the week. Tomorrow night is, uh, tomorrow night is something we're kind of working on. We, we need someone to sub in. And so it's going to be, it's going to be a surprise streamer. We'll, we'll put it at that. Then Sunday is going to be hosted by Josh and Lindsay, and they're going to be starting their resident evil three playthrough. Then Monday is going to be host. <clears throat> sub, sub, sub. That's right. Uh, Monday is going to be hosted by Don. He and Josh are going to be playing some more Gears of War 4. And then Tuesday and uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are hosted by Donnie and Nicole doing date night streams. They have been playing a lot of classic shooters like Doom and Wolfenstein. And I believe they're going to be continuing their playthrough of the VR game Half-Life Alex. And when I return on Wednesday... Um... 
Only on high request will I be playing this game, but also that day Super Mega Baseball 3 comes out and I've been one I've been excited to play that game for a long time and I might be co-streaming that with Greg. My poor voice, yes, these streams are exhausting, but I do it for the people. Uh, so with that, I'm going to wrap this up. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And tune in next time. Thank you. Good night. See ya.